Okay, time to get into some advanced analytics use cases. And so, quick show of hands, how many of you are actually actively involved in developing Tableau dashboards on a day-to-day -day basis? Nice, that's a lot of people. This is gonna be awesome, it's, this is gonna be a lot of fun. So yes, I'm really excited to showcase some of our best projects this year, and we'll get into the nuances that are involved in building the views that we are about to see. So the first one is our call center executive summary dashboard. And to set the stage for that, what Greg mentioned, we have a pretty interesting problem here, where it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty unique problem, quite the opposite to what most organizations have, you know, a peculiar one. We have a problem of plenty. We have a problem of choice. So when a stakeholder, a business stakeholder, wants to analyze different call reasons or uh, call drivers, they would get to our Tableau site and they would come to a landing page, which would look like this. So these are 65 views uh, that are built specifically to analyze call drivers, right? And even when the stakeholder sort of navigates and finds the right dashboard to look at, when they get to the individual view, you, some of the individual views look, look like this, right? So you've got, and what's interesting is in in all the dashboards that you'll see, we have, these are real dashboards uh, uh, people are using in the business every single day, but all numbers are either um, you know, blurred or redacted and uh, changed with hash signs. For this one, I did not have to do a thing. <laughs> so, so you would, so essentially we look at a few hash words, if you will, but this one is an example of how a user would get to our site too. Again, we have uh, certain visuals as well, but you get a sense that some of the views, although insightful, you know, there's a whole lot of data going historical like for a few years, although insightful, they're focused a lot on the metadata, right, rather than the synthesized insight. They're, they're too granular. And an analogy, because I have a finance background, an analogy that I like to use, and um, accounting or finance folks here would appreciate that, is a lot of the stakeholders are looking for a balance sheet of the business. Right? What does a balance sheet tell you? A balance sheet gives you the state of the business at a given snapshot of time. So as of December 31st, 2019, a balance sheet will tell you what are my assets, what are my liabilities, and how much equity do I own, right? What we're giving to those stakeholders is an accounting ledger. So the objective here was to not cannibalize on the 65 views that's already built because uh, people are using that, they're used to it, they're extracting information from that. But to, like, but to complement and capitalize on to build an executive summary, a balance sheet that will show you the state of the business uh, at a given state, of, at a given point in time. So to do that, we have implemented a, a hub and spoke model where a whole lot of the good stuff that's already built is stays where it is, and it is tethered uh, as a satellite dashboard to the mothership balance sheet, the mothership uh, executive summary. Would you guys like to see the mothership? Yeah? Okay. So. Remember the, the KPI slide Greg talked about, you know, primarily we as an organization, Contact Analytics, are trying to answer four main questions, right? How many calls do we get? So you've got one section, one swim lane that starts with calls, right? Second one is how long are the calls? That's the average handle time is the KPI that we measure. That's the second swim lane. Uh, how many repeat calls do we get? That's a repeat percentage or a repeat rate that's there. And how satisfied are the customers? Right. That's our CES score, customer experience survey score, and we look at it in two ways, which I'll you know, get into in a bit. But for all these four questions, there's a key component of why. Right? So the why piece is solved by the call reasons that you see here. So call reasons A, B, C, until J will show you, okay, you've got the call swim lane, you see the volumes, and then you see the volume segmented by call reason A, call reason B, call reason C, et cetera. Right? We talked about assets and liabilities. Right? So for the given dates that I've plugged in, which call reasons are working for me, which are not working for me. So you see a month till date versus a prior month till date delta right there. So what it does is any end date that you've plugged in, uh, the, the logic is built in a such way that, okay, if, I, if, that's, if that's October 6th, it takes the October 1st to October 6th and compares it to September 1st to September 6th. So it's the same partial date of the current month versus the previous month. Right? So you see what's gone up, what's gone down in the same view. Now, the same thing is happening for AHT. You see the volumes, you see the monthly date, prior monthly dates, difference, the repeat percentage, and the CES score. So, now, Greg talked about the difference between drivers and subdrivers, right? So, for example, call reasons could be bill. A call subtopic could be somebody calling to view their bill, or somebody calling to dispute their bill, or they want to get to an auto pay, or they want to, you know, pay their bill off on the phone. So, these are some of the granular subtopics 
that you can look at. But then you would have to go, in the current implementation, you would have to go to a different dashboard to look at those. So how do you incorporate granular views in the same dashboard without, so that the user does not have to leave the view that they are on and does not lose context? So to give you an example, now the user can just hover over and we can use Wiz and tooltips so you can now see what, you know, what comprises in the call reason A. So you can see the subtopics 4, 6, 13, like in the, in the horizontal bar graphs. Right. So we look at when things go up and down. Now you can sort of look at, okay, I'm seeing call reason E has gone down. Uh, uh, the HT for call reason E has gone down month over month. But then I can look at the subtopics. So not everything's gone down. You know, some have gone up, some have gone down. But the overall effect is that the HT for call reason E has gone down. Right. So it's important to see the granular view right in the same view without losing context. Right. One thing that we incorporated is you can see line graphs below. Now you're viewing the four key metrics of the business at a given snapshot in time, but then those line graphs also show you the historical trend, right, in the same view. Furthermore, you can adjust the granularity of those line graphs. So this is a calls, right? So when you, that was a weekly view. When you get to a daily view, you literally start seeing the seasonalities of weekdays versus weekends, et cetera, right? Now, using parameters, we can swap these measures to incorporate different metrics. So you're looking at calls trended. I can switch that to another metric, which is let's switch it to AHT. Let's look at how AHT performed over time, right? I can switch it to the repeat rates, how it's performed over time. So in the same dashboard, now I can view snapshots, I can view time trends, and I can swap measures. And then if you, the whole dashboard can now be segmented and filtered by different, you know, segments or filters uh, that you'd like the entire view to filter on. So you click on the menu here. This is a 2019.3 button functionality. It's pretty cool. So now I can segment all of this by different call types, right? Repeat, Greg talked about the repeat intervals. We get super granular, two hours, same day, three days, seven day, 31 day. We look at the ex uh, customer experience survey score with VZ satisfaction and rep satisfaction. So customer experience surveys with respect to, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your experience with the rep or the experience with the Verizon brand as well? So all of this information in, in one view. Now, what, how, how would I utilize the other satellite views, right? So if we see repeats, let's see, let's see. right? So, yeah. So you see that the call reason E, repeat percentage has gone up on a month, month over month basis. I can now hover over it to see the subtopics in that. And now when I click on that, you know, I get a link that says navigate to the dashboard that allows to listen to repeat calls. The cool thing is whatever slicing and dicing you've done in the original view, those filters get passed in the URL parameters. So you get to the call listing dashboard that Greg talked about, uh, but with the analysis you've done in this dashboard. And every single swim lane ties to different, different views. So if you, you could look at different type of, so the other column in repeats would get you something to identify habitual repeats. This can get you to listen to calls, et cetera. We have, a different, we have the second tab for this. So now that we've established the KPIs, now that we've looked at, okay, how these KPIs are performed at a given snapshot in time, now let's get further granular and try to establish relationships between the two, right? So the second tab is essentially our correlation grids. So if you see on the x-axis, so let's, let, let me pick the top right one. The top right one, on the x-axis, you have the average handle time, which measures how long are the calls, right? On the y-axis, you've got the repeat percentage, right? So if you would want to look at certain call reasons that are longer than average and have a higher repeat percentage than average, you can clearly look at uh, through the uh, scatter plot here where the reference lines that you see essentially are the mean of the population, right? So this becomes really insightful when you get granular. Let me give you an example. Let's again click on the menu bar and change from our driver granularity to a sub-driver granularity. And now you can see we've got detailed call topics. Let's change to sub-drivers and we've got detailed call topics that you can now uh, start establishing relationships. So you can see HD variance from the mean is 13.7. So this particular subtopic 87 is 13.7% longer than average, right? But it's 30.8% uh, more repeats than average too. So this is something we need to take a look at. So directionally speaking, we need to figure this out. So calls are not, not only longer, people are calling again for this particular subdriver, right? 
Let's look at another data point. The size of the circle is the call volume, by the way. So that gives you a sense of uh, what's the sample size for this, right? So the other one, subtopic 118, not only the calls are 37.6% longer, it's got 26.6% higher repeats compared to the mean. So now you can sort of put in your filters, put in your dates with respect to events happening in the business and start looking at relationships with AHT and repeat percentage extra. Let's pick another one. The chart below is, again, HT is the x-axis, how long is, long is the call, and y-axis is the satisfaction, right? So, I mean, my understanding would be if the rep takes, uh, if we can relax a little bit of the HT and the rep takes as long as time it needs to solve the customer needs, the customer satisfaction should be high, right? But, as you can see here, we see something where subtopic six is calls are 23% longer, but then satisfaction is uh, 3% less than uh, what, what the average should have been. So it's an area for us to investigate. And then we are always talking about red flags, but there are green flags as well, right? They're much right opposite to the quadrant. They're something that we're doing really well. The calls are shorter and the customers are super satisfied. So what are we doing? Like, wh what stuff are we doing there? Can we implement some of that, that kind of stuff for the, for the alarming call subtopics? So just an example of how you can look at the state of the business at the executive summary level, and then you can try, try to establish uh, relationships between the drivers to then get directionally start trying to implement projects to improve them, right? So we looked at something that consolidates into an executive summary, which is uh, pretty strategic. 